Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Deep Dive Knowledge Talk. Hello. I'm a technical journalist interested in learning more about your research on voice cloning. Could you please explain to me the mechanism behind voice cloning using transfer learning? Certainly. Voice cloning using transfer learning is a process that allows us to create artificial speech that sounds like a specific person's voice. Even if we have limited data from that person. Imagine you want to learn how to draw a picture of a cat, but you only have a few pictures of cats to learn from. Transfer learning is like having a friend who is really good at drawing cats teach you how to draw. They give you some basic guidelines and techniques that you can apply to your own drawings. Even if you haven't seen all the different types of cats before in voice cloning, Transfer learning works in a similar way. In our research, we use a deep neural network to learn how to generate speech. Typically, this network is trained using a large dataset of recorded speech from a single speaker. However, trying to generate the voice of a different speaker would require a new dataset and retraining the entire model, which is time consuming and expensive. To overcome this limitation, we propose a method that combines two different models. The first model, called a speaker encoder network, is trained independently on a dataset of different speakers. It learns to extract unique characteristics of each speaker's voice. The second model is a sequence to sequence with attention architecture and a neural vocoder model which helps generate natural sounding speech. By using the transfer learning technique from the speaker encoder network, our system is able to generate good quality speech for speakers that it has not seen before. It can capture the unique characteristics of a target speaker's voice using a limited amount of data, making the voice cloning process more efficient and cost effective. Why? In simple terms, voice cloning using transfer learning is like having a friend who knows how to imitate different voices. They teach you some tricks and techniques so that you can imitate the voices of different people, even if you haven't heard them speak before. That's fascinating. So if I understand correctly, the transfer learning approach in voice cloning involves training a speaker encoder network on a dataset of different speakers to learn their unique voice characteristics. Then, this knowledge is transferred to another model that generates the speech using a sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture. This allows the system to generate speech that sounds like the target speaker, even with limited data. data. Could you explain a bit more about how the speaker encoder network captures the unique characteristics of each speaker's voice? How does it extract and represent these characteristics in a way that can be used for voice cloning? The speaker encoder network captures and represents the unique characteristics of each speaker's voice by learning to generate a fixed dimensional embedding vector, also known as a D vector. This embedding vector is trained to meaningfully represent the speaker's characteristics in a transformed space. The network is trained using a text independent speaker verification task. It optimizes the Jetwo loss, which ensures that embeddings of utterances from the same speaker have a high cozy and similarity, while those of utterances from different speakers are far apart in the embedding space. In simpler terms, the speaker encoder network learns to recognize and encode the distinct features of a speaker's voice, regardless of the specific words or background noise in their speech. It does this by training on a task that focuses on identifying and differentiating speakers based on their unique vocal characteristics. I see. So the speaker encoder network learns to generate a fixed dimensional embedding vector, or D vector, that represents the unique characteristics of each speaker's voice. This is achieved through training the network on a task that focuses on speaker verification, where the network learns to differentiate between speakers based on their vocal characteristics. 
Could you explain how the sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture and the neural vocoder model work together to generate natural-sounding speech? How do these models take the encoded voice characteristics and transform them into speech? The sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture and the neural vocoder model work together to transform the encoded voice characteristics into natural-sounding speech by following a step-by-step -step process. First, the sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture, which includes the speaker encoder and synthesizer components, is responsible for generating MEL spectrograms. These MEL spectrograms represent the acoustic features of speech, such as pitch, rhythm, and timbre. The speaker encoder takes the input voice data and extracts embedding vectors that capture the unique characteristics of the speaker's voice. These embedding vectors are then used to condition the outcomes of the synthesizer. The synthesizer component takes the embedding vectors and the text transcript of the speech and predicts MEL spectrograms based on this information. It uses attention mechanisms to align the text and the voice characteristics, ensuring that the generated spectrograms accurately represent the desired speech. Once the MEL spectrograms are generated, they are passed to the neural vocoder model. The vocoder, specifically the Wavern model in this case, takes the MEL spectrograms as input and generates the final waveform of the speech. The vocoder uses the MEL spectrograms to synthesize the speech waveform, which is the actual sound of the speech. The combination of the sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture and the neural vocoder model ensures that the encoded voice characteristics are transformed into natural-sounding speech. The sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture generates high-quality MEL spectrograms, capturing the essential features of speech while the neural vocoder model synthesizes these spectrograms into realistic and natural speech waveforms. That's fascinating. So, the sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture, with the help of the speaker encoder and synthesizer components, generates MEL spectrograms that represent the acoustic features of speech. The speaker encoder extracts the speaker's voice characteristics and conditions the synthesizer's outcomes based on these characteristics. Then, the synthesizer component uses the embedding vectors and the text transcript of the speech to predict MEL spectrograms, ensuring that the generated spectrograms accurately represent the desired speech through the use of attention mechanisms. Finally, the neural vocoder model, specifically the Wavern model, takes these MEL spectrograms as input and synthesizes the speech waveform, which is the actual sound of the speech. By combining these models, the system is able to transform the encoded voice characteristics into natural-sounding speech by generating high-quality spectrograms and synthesizing them into realistic speech waveforms. This approach seems to be a promising way to overcome the limitations of single-speaker TTS models and enable voice cloning for multiple speakers. How has this approach performed in terms of generating speech that sounds like different target speakers, even if they were not observed during the training phase? Have there been any notable challenges or limitations in the process? According to the study, the approach of using the sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture and the speaker encoder network has performed well in generating speech that sounds like different target speakers, even if they were not observed during the training phase. The speaker encoder network is responsible for computing a fixed dimensional embedding vector from a few seconds of reference speech of a target speaker. This embedding vector captures the unique characteristics of the speaker's voice. The sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture, combined with attention mechanisms, is used to convert text into speech. By using a transfer learning technique, based on utterance embeddings rather than speaker embeddings, the synthesizer and the vocoder are able to generate good quality speech for speakers that were not seen during training. The authors report that the experiments showed a reasonable similarity with real speech and improvements over the baseline system. 
In simpler terms, the system learns to recognize and capture the unique features of a person's voice from a short sample. It then uses this information to generate speech that sounds like that person, even if the system has never heard that person before. This allows the system to generate natural speech for a wide variety of speakers, making it a useful tool for voice cloning applications. That's impressive. It's fascinating how the system can learn to capture the unique features of a person's voice from just a short sample and then generate speech that sounds like that person, even if it hasn't encountered that person during training. Now, this opens up a wide range of possibilities for voice cloning applications. In terms of limitations, were there any challenges or areas where the system faced difficulties in generating accurate and natural sounding speech? How does the system handle variations in speech patterns, accents, or other individual differences that may exist among different speakers?